The Parker Punch Tool is a fast, high volume pneumatic button punch capable of 9,600 punches a day. In this video, we're going to cover all the information you need to know to operate the Parker Punch Tool. This video is brought to you by Western Metal Deck, your source for metal decking needs. If you have a job that has metal decking and you need it quickly, MetalDeck.com has you covered. We have a large inventory of roof and floor deck in multiple sizes and gauges. With facilities located in Southern California and Phoenix, Arizona, you can get same day or next day delivery or pickup. Decking today, no delay at MetalDeck.com. In this video, we will cover equipment required to operate the Parker Punch Tool, how to set up the air compressor, required maintenance, setting up your work area, safety procedures, and how to operate the Parker Punch Tool. Equipment required. In order to operate the Parker Punch Tool, you'll need an air compressor and an air hose. A proper air compressor is vital in supplying the correct power to the Parker Punch Tool. The compressor needs to be capable of creating 110 pounds per square inch. We recommend the Roll Air 5.5 horsepower 9 gallon gas wheelbarrow air compressor with a Honda engine. The reason you want an air compressor with 110 psi capacity is the air tank must be large enough to allow you to work without continually stopping and waiting for the compressor to refill. If your air tank is too small, it could take time to recharge and therefore delay your job. The second most important item you need is an air hose. The right air hose will have a minimum of half an inch inside diameter. The male fitting on the Parker Punch Tool is 3 8 inch diameter, so the air hose needs to be prepared for this size. Depending on the size and power of your compressor, you should use a 100 foot long air hose. The longest air hose you should ever use is 200 feet. If you use an air hose that is longer than 200 feet, you will get defective punches. This is the result of reduced PSI from the air hose being too long. Always inspect your air hose for any leaks, holes, or cracks. Proper air compressor settings. It's very important that the air pressure be set according to the gauge of the metal decking being used on the job. This chart shows the minimum air pressure for each different gauge. These air compressor settings are for the amount of PSI at the tool. If there is not enough air pressure according to the gauge, the Parker Punch crimp will not be done correctly. Failure to have the correct settings can lead to an inspector rejecting the work for incorrect crimps. Setting the air compressor to a setting of 110 PSI will work metal decking as light as 22 gauge and as heavy as 18 gauge. It will also get the correct amount of PSI to the Parker Punch tool. If you have a job with multiple gauges, you will not have to remember to adjust your PSI settings. How to operate the Parker Punch tool. Attach one end of the air hose to the Parker Punch tool and the other end to your compressor. Start the compressor and wait for the pressure to get to the correct PSI setting. Make sure that the air compressor is properly drained of any accumulated water. Hold the tool in the upright position and put the jaws over the side lap. Then pull the trigger. You will hear a clicking sound when it's done. Installer should always apply more body weight to the female side lap than the male side lap before pulling the trigger. Make sure to lubricate the tool every four hours of production. Parker Punch crimp should not be made at the end laps of deck. This could damage the tool. There's just too much material to punch through, which will likely result in cracked blades. Required maintenance prior to startup. Prior to using the Parker Punch tool, you will need to perform maintenance. An important note, Make sure that the air is disconnected from the tool prior to and while performing maintenance to prevent injuries. Never put your hands near the jaws where the tool is connected to the air hose. Each day, you will need to lubricate all moving parts with 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil or Marvel Mystery Oil. This is critical in preventing the tool from breaking down. Repeat this procedure every four hours of operation, setting up your work area. Before starting a job, it's ideal to scout the location. Access to the work areas is different for each job. 
you will need to get the Parker Punch tool, air compressor, hose, and employees to the working floor or roof that is being punched. To get to the work area, you may need a ladder, rope, and a forklift, which you'll need to know before starting a job. Place your air compressor in a location that gives you the most access on all sides to your work area. Do a visual inspection of your Parker Punch tool to make sure nothing is loose and that there are no missing parts. For accurately spaced crimps, you should set chalk lines at the correct spacing required by your project's plans. Another method that can be used is prior to spreading decking, spray paint lines on the female side of the metal decking lap spaced to the specific distance needed in accordance to the specifications on the plans. This will provide easily viewed guides at each crimp mark. Safety procedures. Always refer to the operator's manual and review the safety procedures prior to operation of the Parker Punch tool. Make sure that you are equipped with the necessary safety gear. You will need hard hat, safety glasses, ear protection, steel toe boots, work clothes, work gloves, safety belt, lanyard to tie off when working near the perimeter or near openings. Inspect the work area to make sure it's safe. Make sure all openings have clear safety cables around them. Also make sure that the entire perimeter of the building or roof has safety cable around it.